Hello and welcome again to Backpage. I'm Jody C. and today we're visiting with Sandra De Helen. You know, sometimes trying to keep all of the authors on board uh, during this show is kind of like trying to keep ants in a cup. Um, and one of my authors bailed the other day, and I needed somebody in here quickly. And luckily, Sandra De Helen has a brand new book that she's interested in promoting, and I don't blame her because it's it's good. What you sent me really drew me in quickly you know just in that first chapter I was like whoa oh, because I really I liked um, the the lead character is Shirley Coombs Combs. Shirley Combs which if you say it quickly it sounds like Sherlock Holmes who's a uh, detective and and her sidekick is Dr. Mary Watson that's right so anyway how did this all come about tell us about this story well people ask me a lot of times authors are asked, where did you get, where do you get your ideas? Mm -hmm. Well, this came to me literally as I was walking across the street downtown Portland. And so I tell them that it obviously it was in rain cloud, just waiting for the, a willing author or writer to walk across the street because mm -hmm. <laughs> I was crossing the street at 5th and Main, downtown Portland one day, and I just stopped dead in the street because I was hit with this idea of, of writing um, a female Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Mm -hmm. And I just stopped dead in the street and, you know, it's a bus mall. <laughs> so, <laughs> can't can't it, it, loiter too you know, long. No, I, no I, had to, I had to hurry across the street, but I really, I, I just had to, you know, keep thinking about it and, um, and then I couldn't let go of it. Mm -hmm. and, I really like the idea of having a present day woman detective based on Sherlock Holmes with a sidekick, Dr. Mary Watson. I made her a naturopath mm -hmm. and um, I, I, and I just kept working on that and, and let them come to me. Um, I, Shirley Combs, Shirley Combs is, um, she has a lot of the personality of the original Sherlock. She's mm -hmm. not exactly like him, mm -hmm. um, but she was teased about her name so much that she developed an interest in him mm -hmm. and developed a lot of his methods. Mm -hmm. And of course, read about him and read his case studies. And now that she is a detective, she often uses his methods so to solve her own deducing cases. this and deducing that yes you know and, and very observant yeah and then it becomes elementary <laughs> yeah. my dear watson yes yeah, well mm -hmm. she she uses the phrase occasionally mm -hmm. you know a friend of mine uh, adopted a beagle that someone had found by a school mm -hmm. and she named him watson and i said what kind of school was it like she said what do you mean what kind of school this was high school junior high she said elementary <laughs> and i said of course <laughs> where else would he have been found? all right of course anyway so um to live in portland this has a lot about it in portland when i was reading the first couple of chapters and um i thought oh, i know where that is mm -hmm. i know where that is mm -hmm. oh yeah I've, I've, I've been there mm -hmm. you know and you have um and there's murder I and mean, there's intrigue and a woman out running and um, is killed by dogs, and that's her huge fear. Right. So this was uh, quite involved. Right. Well, the cases, and this is the f first book in a series, mm -hmm. and so the cases will all be, de I call them, descended from the original case book of Sherlock Holmes, mm -hmm. The Adventures and, and Hounds Cases. Hounds of the Baskerville. Or, right. So the first yeah. one is uh, from the the Hound of the Baskervilles. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the, um, the victim is a descendant of the original Baskervilles. Mm -hmm. And she has inherited the curse of the Baskervilles. Mm -hmm. So she has this, this deep phobia of dogs. And when she runs, she's always very aware of dogs. She's very scared of dogs. She carries an umbrella to fend them off. She carries mace to squirt them in case they attack her. Um, and so when she is attacked, she actually dies of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. 
from the fear, yeah. not from the dogs themselves. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's how the case begins with that. Um, the, um, and all of, all of my cases, although all of Sherlock Holmes' cases don't have murder in them, all of mine will, be, will have murders because mm -hmm. they will all be murder mysteries. So how do you think it, it I, I don't, my brain is not that big to think of the one that I'm working on now and then the one after that and the one after that. How do you do that? Um, well, I, I didn't in the beginning. I, I, I started with this one, mm -hmm. knowing that I, I wanted to develop the characters. I wanted to develop, because as you know, and not everybody else does, but as you know, I've been a playwright for many years, Yeah, over 30 and years. a darn good one too, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I think in terms of characters. Mm -hmm. And that's how, of course, I, I thought of Sherlock Holmes and, and Dr. Watson as characters first, and then thinking of placing them somewhere. And as I worked on, on this book, they became more real to me as they, they develop. I, um, the way I write plays, the way I write books, is I start with a lot of character development, um, backstory for them. Mm -hmm. It's not all in the book. But I write, I make notebooks. Um, the notebook for the hounding was on paper. And um, it had maps and blueprints and all the backstory for where they're from, what they look like, what, what kinds of things they like, the blueprints for their um, apartments and houses, mm -hmm. a map of. Uh, the place where Scylla Vandeleur was killed mm -hmm. and um, where she ran and, and then the blueprint of her house um, of all the people's places, all the, all the places, all the areas, hmm. everywhere. Wow. So I, I'm very familiar with all the characters and, and all their backstories and what they look like, how they sound, mm -hmm. how they talk to each other. Do you do a a big um, action board, a storyboard? Um, now, yeah. these days, I do a storyboard, but I do it online. Really? Yeah, on the computer. I do it on the computer. Oh. And, and now, I use, <laughs> now I use Pinterest um, instead of a um, physical notebook. I have a, an online, I use Pinterest for, so if you go to Dr. Mary PDX, um, she has a Pinterest. And uh, so she has different different boards for different characters and for herself and for Shirley. So you have an idea of what their places look like mm -hmm. and what kinds of things they would have in their home, what kinds of things that they read. And You do this online? Yes. Sandra, I still have all <laughs> of my eight tracks. <laughs> They're in the garage next to my Confederate money. <laughs> so, hey, if you're just tuning in, we're talking with Sandra to Helen about who, who her new book is called The Hounding, um, and it's quite good. This is a good picture of you on the back here, by the Thank way. You. Yeah. So, when did you start writing, Sandra? And it was plays forever and ever. Right. That's how we met, as a matter of fact, in uh, 2000. Your play, The Bobsy Twins Go to Hell, yes. was a finalist in the Oregon Book Awards, and my novel was a finalist in the Oregon Book Awards, and that's how we met. So it's been a a long friendship, and uh, when I had knee surgery, when I had my knee replaced, uh, Sandra brought me a coconut cake. Right, and the only reason I didn't bring you one today is my oven is broken. Well, it's just as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, um, th did you self-publish this? Is that how you did it? I did, it was, actually, it was originally published as an ebook mm -hmm. by Fiction, F Fiction Inc., mm -hmm. but that was in 1999. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were probably mm, maybe 500 e-readers sold nationwide mm. <laughs> that year. It's and very it, different and, now. And this was a, a bestseller that year. Wow. Right, because, you know, there were probably 500 e-readers. Um, and so um, it went out of print and the, the rights reverted to me. Mm -hmm. And I uh, revised it, brought it up to date um, so that now they have things like cell phones mm -hmm. and, you know, online and internet and all that, and, um, and publish it mm -hmm. through CreateSpace. Yeah. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's a great cover. Thank you. I mean, this looks like it where does. somebody was running when they got it, it waylaid. Does. It does, doesn't you it? know. Yeah. So, um, how did this? All the different places in Portland, like the woman who dies is a, an heiress to a timber fortune. Right. And how did you? Who'd you base that on? Anybody mm. in particular? No. You didn't. So you just made it up. I made it up. Yeah. I, I wanted to have um, I wanted to have a social issue mm -hmm. that was relevant to the Pacific Northwest, so I had um, old growth forest mm -hmm. as the issue, and I wanted and and you know you have to have some reasons that people are going to be murdered. Mm -hmm. I mean I do. i if you're going <laughs> to do a murder mystery, can't I? You know. Yeah, it has to make sense. You have to have some yeah. suspects. Yeah. And usually you're going to have things like jealousy, um, money, things like that, mm -hmm. you know, and some work issues or, I mean, there have to be reasons mm -hmm. to kill people. I don't go around killing people for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so, so um, I had, I, and since she was descended from the Baskervilles, I figured you know, there would have been investments and mm -hmm. maybe the fortune would continue. That didn't happen in, in my family, but in her family it did. Mm -hmm. And um, so she was she was taking her cue from the guy, the tobacco guy, the Raleigh tobacco guy mm -hmm. who um, used his fortune to um, fight the, the tobacco people and, and, um, and fund all these non-smoking mm. programs for people. Yeah, kind of yeah. like the the uh, Robbins grandson of Baskin Robbins um, became very, he became vegan and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. upset his grandfather greatly. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, anyway, so how are you promoting it now besides being on this show, which of course we know everybody watches? Well, this is a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, there, there are, well, I've had to learn a lot about book marketing because if you are um, an indie author mm -hmm. and self-publishing, which ma many, many people are these yes. days, it really is, uh, uh, it's a revolution in the publishing industry. Mm -hmm. And so there, you, you have to learn. But right now, um, because it's new, there are many ways to learn that are free which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. This is this won't always be the case. Yeah. Um, so you have to you have to do a lot of research and you have to you know you try some things out and maybe they're not that good but you keep looking and there are some people out there that are really good at book marketing that do offer some free programs. Melissa Foster is one, Rachel Thompson is another um, and you can find them online and and then you find out some things you you have to um, it's if you're good at it at all you should start a blog mm -hmm. and you need to blog once a week at least and um, you need to go on a blog tour you and which means you do you do interviews and and blog posts on other people's blogs mm -hmm. for at least a week you offer your book for free usually try to hook those two things up. Mm -hmm. um, you get on Twitter. I've been on Twitter for four years now. Um, so you, you tweet every day and... On Twitter? Yeah. How can you... I mean, I'm, I don't know how it works. I don't know what it is exactly, but it seems to me like you have a teeny amount of space to say what you need to say. 140 characters. That's all? That's it. <laughs> I can't speak that succinctly. Well, the the secret you know? to Twitter is that you um, you create a link to something else, like you create a link to your blog post mm -hmm. or to your website, and you also in your Twitter bio you have links to your website, to your blog post, to your book itself, to your mm -hmm. book sales links. And um, actually, you have two. You can have two links in your bio, so you want to have one of them to be to the sale of your book, mm -hmm. and probably the other one you need to your blog post or your website. And then you you send out so many 
so many tweets a day, not too many. You have to, you know, you have to space them out. You don't want to spam people. Is this why people write, write like, are you, like, are you, rather than the whole word? Mm -hmm. I don't Just, do that very much. Yeah, I wouldn't either. That kind of makes me crazy. Well, there you go. Yeah. See, <laughs> I, I really try to, and, and the other thing that, I mean, you, you hook up with other authors so that you retweet some of the, you know, you promote them, they promote you. Mm -hmm. um, and I really try not to spam people because people are irritated with, oh, there's too many tweets. But just the other day, I crossed the division of, I now have more followers than people I follow. Hey, that's a good thing. I think it is, yes. So you have all these people following your tweets? Yes. You just are randomly tweeting into the world and, and they're, hanging on every word. <laughs> oh gosh, what is Sandra going to say next? Well, <laughs> what, I, yeah. I, I love it when she tweet, <laughs> tweets in my direction. <laughs> it's because, um, because I try to send out things that are useful. Mm -hmm. I try to send things that they're, that people are interested in. I'm not, I don't tweet about what I'm having for lunch, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. who I'm mad at now. And, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't go there. So, so how'd you get all of your, um, your Twitterites? How did tweeps. you find your tweets? How'd you find them? I mean, well, they, have, they have to find me. Okay. I, you know, I, I think a, a lot um, from supporting other people, mm -hmm. supporting uh, other authors, from writing. Well. From my blog, I think mm -hmm. I probably get a lot of people. So on your on your blog, you can say for, you can follow me on Twitter at. You know. Yes, I I have all the little widgets. Yeah, all the little buttons so that people can follow me on Facebook or I have an author Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I have my own personal Facebook page. We have a back page mm -hmm. Facebook page. That's our back page Facebook page. Right. Which Sandra handles for me because uh, <laughs> I'm not good with technology. No, but I noticed that a lot of people are, a lot more people are following Backpage now. Well, because I, the other day I said I was looking at our Backpage Facebook page and realized we need some friends. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> they all went there and friended us. So there you go. I mean, that's I'm, right. I may do it again. Yes, you know, do it again. Double friend us. That's right. So. Anyway, um, how many plays have you written in your lifetime, do you suppose? Well, I have more than, I, th I think I have about 25 full-length plays. Mm -hmm. Probably 10 or 12 one-act plays. Mm, I don't know how many 10-minute plays. I don't, I know a lot of people write a lot of them, but I had, I came to that late and I'm just not that fond of them. I wrote a new one this year that I really like, mm -hmm. and um, that one's been produced on live television, which I really liked. Really? Mm -hmm. What was that one? It's called Singer Clashes with Cougar. Okay. And we did it off book with costumes. And what does that mean, off book? Not standing and reading, which is almost everything these days is uh, nothing but a stage reading. I mean, seriously. Uh, it's really hard to get mm -hmm. a full production. So when you do something like that, how do you get it paid for? How do you, do you go through a production company or Go what? to the bank and draw some money out and yeah. hand it to people. <laughs> 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 That's discouraging. <laughs> I know, I know. I, um, yeah, I, I, although I did have a staged reading in New York City this year mm -hmm. that I didn't have to pay anything for. That's good. Yes. So was what nice. was what play was that? Uh, it was the same one. The same one. Mm -hmm. And so how did you how did you find out who to send it to? How did how did all that all come about? Well, I look for opportunities um, online, mm -hmm. and I, I I look for things that I think. Um, well, this looks like a place that they would like this play. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of plays, and so I try to send only the things that I think people would be interested in. I don't just blanket 
I, I don't have time for that. Yeah. And I don't. And I. And anyway, people now with things being able to be submitted online, mm -hmm. people are getting hundreds of submissions, hundreds where they used to get twenty. Yeah. yeah. Now they get seven hundred. Oh gee. Yeah. How could you even read that they much? They can't. You know. They can't. I mean, it used to be when somebody would send a manuscript. Right. You know, over the transom, they called it, you know, right. unsolicited thing. And then they would all pile up in a room. And then every three months, they'd get an intern from, you know, the local college to go through them and, and read them. Right. And that always disturbed me because I didn't want an intern from, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Clackamas Community College reading my manuscript. I wanted, and that was the purpose of getting an agent because exactly. otherwise it, it would never get read by anybody mm -hmm. with any clout. Right. So, go ahead. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It's still the same. I mean, it's, you know, now it's it's a, a college student or, you know, an intern mm -hmm. looking online at your script, if they have time. Yeah. So, who, who do you send it to? Who did you send it to in New York? You saw this online and said, maybe they'll produce my play. Um, it was Your Name Here. Queer Theater Company, mm -hmm. and it was at the Tada Theater, which I had um, I had been to mm -hmm. last fall, and I thought, oh, I know that space. That's a good space. Your name here, Queer Theater. They're looking for something with um, queer characters, mm -hmm. and they wanted a limited number of characters, a simple set. I had all that. And with, you know, in 10 minutes, 10 or 12 minutes, my scripts met all those criteria. Wow. So did they pay you? No. So it just gets the play out there. Yeah. And also, I knew that they would most likely get more men, and they would probably like to produce some women. Mm -hmm. So I thought I had a shot, and I did. I was wow. right. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. So... You started writing plays. How? What did you do before you started doing that? You were executive, right? Of oh some no, sort? not then. No, when I started writing plays, I had just got out of college, but um, but I wrote poetry before that. Mm -hmm. So I and my first paid, the first thing I got paid for writing, I was twelve. I wrote an essay, and I won first place at the American Legion Post. Really. Yes, it was a patriotic essay, mm -hmm. and and I had to um, go to the meeting and read my essay, you know, in front of everybody to collect my three dollars, mm -hmm. and I did. Wow. Yeah. So did that just like light the spark? Well, uh, it was very validating. Sure. Yeah. And uh, and then my first publication was I was fourteen and I wrote a poem about abortion. This was 1958, and my English teacher got it published in a teacher's magazine, mm -hmm. and that was also <laughs> pretty validating. But yeah. um, my mom wouldn't even read it. Really? Yeah. Wow, that was pretty brave. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, really for what? What year was it? 1958. Yeah. I mean. Holy cow. Yeah. I'm surprised you weren't tarred and feathered. I know. You know, I mean, really. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it had been real, I probably would have been tarred and feathered, yeah. but it wasn't real. And then um, I, I had some poems published in my 20s. Um, and so I, can, I thought of myself as a poet. And yeah. then, uh, but then I, I started this theater, feminist theater class with the Free University in Kansas City. And... Um, this one woman showed up, Kate Caston was her name, still is her name, and um, she said, well, let's start a theater company. I said, okay. She said, but you have to write the plays. I said, what? I don't know anything about writing plays. She said, well, you're the one with all the good ideas, so you have to write the plays. I said, okay. So I started writing plays. Yeah, well, you know, the musical that I wrote this last year, Melinda Pittman said to me, I've decided that I want Broad Arts Theater to produce the Cowgirl musical you and I have talked about. And I went, 
great. She said, here's the thing, though. You have to write it. <laughs> See how that goes? And I went, um, you realize I've never actually written a play, like, ever. And she went, get a book. <laughs> you know? So, anyway. Hey, if you're just tuning in, I'm Jody C. This program is Backpage, and we're talking with Sandra DeHelen about many things, but um, primarily her book, her new book, The Hounding. Where can people get this if they are... They can get that on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. They can get it on CreateSpace.com. Yeah. Um, those are the two places. Okay. Amazon. Unless they want to come knock on my door. Yeah. I, ju I just ride around with some in the back of my car. Do you? Yeah, and oh. hope that somebody um, goes, gosh, what's that? You yeah. know, there then you I go. can sell them a book or two. So you've written this. You're promoting this. What else are you doing now? Well, I'm I'm on chap I just finished chapter eight of the illustrious client, mm -hmm. which is the, the next, next one, one in the series, okay. and in November I'm going to write a new novel because I'm going I'm going to do the Nano Rimo, which is National Write a Novel Month. Really? Yes. So how does that work? It's one of those things where you have to write a novel in thirty days or yes, something it like is, that. Yes, exactly. Wow. You have to complete fifty thousand words in thirty days. Wow. And then you send it in, on, and then they check to make sure you've completed your 50,000 words or more. Mm -hmm. And then that's called winning. <laughs> 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 so you win. Yeah. And so do you know what it is? Do you have a story oh, in your head? I don't. I know a lot of people do. A lot of people are already there, but I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. I, I've been saying um, since I started The Illustrious Client that the next book, which won't be in the series, is be completely different is going to be a very dark mm -hmm. thriller with comic overtones maybe like Dexter oh yeah I've watched Dexter yeah well but it's good but it's uh, it, it is a little dark you it, know it'd be dark yeah um, but mm, I that's as far as I've gotten so yeah. far and I, so when does that start that you have to think this? November 1st. Oh, gosh. Well, you've got a month. Yeah, I'll be there. To, to flesh it out in your head anyway. Yeah. But um, anyway, this book is by Sandra DeHelen. We're going to have to wrap it on up oh, here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I know. It goes quickly, doesn't it? It does, yes. Um, I'm Jody C. This program is Backpage. Join us again next time as we take another peek at the back page. And remember, we're all in this together. More the same than different. Do your best. <laughs>